Hello and you are more than welcome back to Little Miss Drop Stitch and today it's a sewing tutorial and we're going to be making this doggy bandana okay perfect in time for Christmas so he's already put his requests in and so is his friend Reggie so we've got our example here I have also got on the website a picture step-by-step -step tutorial if that's how you prefer to learn okay and all the measurements will be on there as well I'll do it as an image and also an accessible spreadsheet table um, for the different size bandanas for all the different size dogs and examples of you know what dog so this is a large this is um for Obi, who's a labrador okay and um, the medium um that will be for reggie who's a collie okay but everything will be on there so do take a look at the website so this is my example a couple of things to bear in mind okay so the pattern will be because we're folding the fabric okay on a diagonal so there will be, you see that, that bit's upside down. So just make sure that's the back. If you are putting anything that, that would denote something as the front. So I've got a little label here that says made by Auntie Rachel, some paw prints. Okay, so if, if that does bother you about things being directional, I'd suggest using something like this, like a spotty fabric. Okay, you will need an iron. I say that, <laughs> you might not all listen, and that's fine. Um, it, it does make a difference um, to the presentation and also your accuracy as well, and you'll see why later on. Okay, so we've got a nice metallic fabric. Okay, something to bear in mind with metallic, okay? And <laughs> I've just learned this. Um, it's better to press it from the back, okay? Because it can lose its shine. I think I've got away with it, but I think over time it, it might lose its shine if you're using a lot of steam and things. I'm using um, Crit Cut Mini Iron just because it's easier than getting the big iron out and things like that. Okay, so we've got our fabric at the size that it says on the chart on the website. Okay, and your first step, we're going to fold it into a triangle, okay, and iron, you might want to uh, trim bits off, um, that's because I trusted the person who cut the flat quarter clearly for it to be straight, um, so yeah, I'm going to iron it along there because I want, I'm, I need to make a crease and then I'll also just trim that bit off there. Here we are, we're back. Like nothing ever happened, okay? I've trimmed that excess off and it's clear for that. So flat quarter, I just lined it up with the edges of the pre-cut flat quarter. Um, obviously hoping that it was going to be straight um, and it's never going to be perfectly straight because it's hand cut. So that's all sorted. Uh, I had no choice but to iron on the metallic but I just made sure I did the least possible okay and this is why it's worth going to the extra effort for the crease. I know some people use the little rollers or the thumbs but especially on the big band lines, it, it is difficult um, to keep it all central. So we've got our crease then you want to fold in the fabric at the corners Okay, by the, ju just the amount it says for your size on the website because they'll all be different. And this is going to give us our depth to go over the collar. Okay, and it's taking a bit of experimenting because even though you might not have a giant dog, um, like Obi, even though he's a lab, he's, you know, he's not in Newfoundland, is he? Um, but then the collars will be quite thick. So his was um, three centimetres wide, so over an inch. Okay, so. We'll fold it in, where's my ruler? There we are. There we go. And this is why it's it's um, good to have this crease done with an iron. I have tried it before. I, believe me, I've had a good go at being lazy. Um, I've tried to do it with my hands, but you just can't really see it. So you do want the point in line with this. That's why it was important for me to trim that excess rather than try and budge it because we do need it to go through the centre. Yeah, brilliant. Um, now what I want to do is iron those. Okay, here, and they'll stay in place nicely. Now we're back, okay, we've pressed them and that will help them stay in place and make this next bit so sewing easier. Okay, so we're going to take this to the machine and top stitch down here. Um, I'd recommend probably about an eighth of an inch or that next little line along um, on, on the guide on the sewing machine. So let's top stitch. Don't forget to back tack as well.
Okie doke. So we've now, I'm just thinking, if I had a pound for every time I said okie doke. Um, we've now top stitched these and that's, so at the, um, when we've done our bandana, that's just a nice neat finish. The bar edges won't pop out. Okay. There's no overlocking in this as well, which is great. So where we've got our crease line up to fold. So this is your traditional bits of sewing right sides together. Okay. And you're going to want to sew from there, okay, up to there. And it's just kind of a, a visual thing. So you stop in when you get to the, the right side showing fabric on them. It does look a bit like a dog, doesn't it? Um, so from there to there. And I'll see you back in a moment. So I've sewn round, uh, just to mention seam allowance, I mean, do what you want really. I did um, press a foot to the edge just to make it nice and easy. So that's what, half a centimetre, is it also quarter an inch? Um, so yeah, I just did press a foot to the edge. Um, what I'd also recommend is just, can you see me? I just chop across, not too near the stitch lines and that will help us um, just to have a nice crisp point in a moment and it really helps that I had done all that ironing prep and stuff because um, I, I could be lazy and not use pins and um, just because those folds were already there and I was guided by it. Okay, turn inside out again. I like this project because there's no remembering to leave a gap, turning over, top stitch and all that. So, there we are. We're just going to push through like that. This might be a little bit more fiddly on the um, smaller ones for the little dogs. Okay, and then I don't even use a knitting needle for this. Just put that point out. Okay, we are going to do one final line at the end, but I won't make you do it yet. So I'm going to do now. You're going to need a bit of chalk. Obviously, only works if you uh, put it on your tongue as well beforehand. Get a bit more pigment. Um, any old ruler, and then draw a line from there to there. Chalk, air erasable, heat erasable, pen, whatever. Um, I have on the little ones you can get away with it, but again, the big ones with all the will in the world, um, you do go, you know, stray. So it is worth putting that line in. And this is the bit, if you sell them or whatever, that customers, even if they're not sold, will notice if it's wonky. Okay. So just do it from the corner to the corner, bottom of that top stitching. Okay. And then you're going to follow that on your sewing machine and top stitch. So there we go, we've got our top stitch. Only one more bit of sewing left now, okay. And so that that's, your collar will be able to go through. Um, so on the, the big bandanas, they'll be bigger on just because collars can be a lot thicker, okay? And that's why I like this pattern as well, because you still do get like your triangles, not little, you still do get the big effect, even if it's going over a big collar. Okay, last bit of sewing now. Top stitch from there to there. I use, I did use the eighth of an inch guide actually for this one. Make it nice and neat. This way you need to um, double check if you've got a right side or a wrong side, I, I've ended up doing them even with heat press as well with, with them back to front, but all we get what he's given and he's grateful. So I am, um, again, for my right side, I've got a little label made by Auntie Rachel and I'm going to catch that as I sew along. There's minimal pinning in this project, which is very good. And here we are, done and dusted. Okay, so we've done that top stitching, put my label on. My, um, it's not that top of a tip, my mildly important tip would be to just ensure that you're back tacking um, because, it, you know, dogs will be rolling around, things like that. So it will get some wear and tear, even though it's decorative. Um, yes, I totally could have used red thread, but I want to um, just use up my bits of white and I've already got that threaded. So there we have it. I can't wait to see your dogs with your makes on them. It's not all about Orby, even though he thinks it is. So do share those with me, um, hashtag LMDS um, on Instagram and all those places. See you next time. Thank you.